So another example, let's solve x squared plus 2 equals 9. Zero, zero factor. factor. Theorem. If I do the zero factor theorem, I move the 9 over here. That's something good to look at, but I get x squared minus 7, right? Mm -hmm. How does x squared minus 7 factor? It's not, so I'm going to factor. But what have we been doing? We've been looking at examples with the square root property, right? Mm -hmm. But notice what the square root property says. Okay. The square root property says if x squared equals a, now here's what you need to understand about this. x squared is just some variable expression that's being squared, and it equals a number. So I don't two. have that, so I do have to move the 2 first. So if I move the 2 over, I get x squared equals what? Seven. Now is that a guy where I could use the square root property? Mm -hmm. So then let's do that. So I'm going to use the square root property. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But what must I remember when I do that? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Because I'm expecting to have what? Two answers. Two answers. If I don't have the plus or minus, I don't get that. So what does x equal? Plus or minus. Plus or minus seven. Why don't you reduce the square root of 7? Why don't I? Because, because you can't reduce that. right? How are we going to break down 7? Uh, well, 1 times 7, well, 1's a perfect square, so I'll bring that out. <laughs> Yippee, you got to multiply times 1. Way to be a game changer there. So, can we write it like x plus minus square root of 7? We don't have to write x equals negative square root of 7 and Right. Positive. You don't have to split this up unless you're doing something on the computer and it asks you to split it up. Sometimes you may see a test where it has them not written as plus or minus, but separate. So yeah, I just want you to be uh, aware of that. Okay, But if you do this for me, I'm happy. Totally happy with that. Okay, Now, take what you can get. I want you to look at this if you were to graph it. When you graph that, you'd set each of these guys equal to y, and you could graph that. If I look at 9, y mm. equals 9 is just a horizontal line going through 9, right? How would you graph x squared plus 2? We've done so much with graphing these guys. What is this shape? Start with that. It's a parabola. What have you done to the parabola? He's gone up 2. So he's moved up 2, and then he's this nice parabolic shape, right? How many times do these guys intersect each other? Two times. Two times. And guess what those x values are when they <coughs> intersect each other? This corresponds to x equals the square root of 7. And this guy corresponds to what? Negative, negative, negative square root of 7. If you look at the last example that we did, okay, I had x squared equals negative 48. What does x squared look like? Here's a parabola. What does negative 48 look like if you were to graph that? A, line. a horizontal line going where? A horizontal going underneath, right? Yeah. So if it's going underneath and the parabola is on top of that, how many times do those, do those guys intersect? <coughs> it doesn't because it's above it. Here's x squared, right? And somewhere down here yeah, is negative 48. Where do these guys intersect? Never. They don't. They don't. But I, I have solutions though, right? Yeah. But what kind of solutions do I have? Imaginary. I got things that are imaginary. I got complex solutions, right? Yeah. So these guys, when I graph here, this is the real plane, right? Everything here is real numbers, x and y. My solutions are imaginary. That it doesn't fit here. Are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you get solutions like this and you try to check on your graphing calculator through graphing, you're not going to see it. So just be aware of that. Now you can still check and plug things into your graphing calculator and I can show that to you later. Um, but in a real sense, if you graph it, you wouldn't see that. Which is why here you do see that because even though the square root of 7 is not a pretty number, if you type them into your calculator, you still get a number. You get a decimal, right? You guys are looking at me like I'm, I'm not even me anymore. 
who are you? It's like we don't even know you anymore. Who am I? That's a great existential question. Uh, who are any of us, really? So uh, hey let's Dylan. go. You know what? Hi, Don. Let's do another example, okay? Let's try doing this guy. You know, the other day I was just sitting and thinking about this guy. And I'm like, you know what? I bet my students would really like him as much as I do. Hmm. So if I've got x squared minus 12 equals negative 24, uh, let's see how we can solve this. Move the 12. Totally, totally. Yes. Let's move the 12 over. And that means that I've got x squared equal to... Negative 36. That's interesting you say negative 36 because I would add oh yeah, 12 to both sides. And oh, looky, looky, what do I get? Should be negative 12. Not only should it be, but it is negative 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now what am I going to do that I've got my x squared totally by himself? I would totally not square these guys square. because if I square them, it makes me even bigger. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to use the square root property. Oh, easy killer. Hold on. <laughs> I'm still catching up. You take the square root of both sides totally, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to remember your plus or minus? Mm hmm So x is equal to what? Plus or minus? Plus two. That's four times three. Plus two square roots of three. It's what? The square root of four is two. No, no, calm down. Don't be angry. The numbers are just doing all they can to help you. This is plus or minus two i times the square root of three. What do you guys think? I like it. Great. So plus or minus two i squared root of three. Is everybody all right with that? Yeah. Jeez. All right. We got room for one more here. Hmm. Hmm. Is that somebody in here? Mm-hmm. Let's not though. Five <laughs> <sighs> x squared plus one equals negative seventy nine. Oh. 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 Ah. How am I going to do this one? What did I do in the last problem? You move the 12 over, but you, the reason you did that is because you wanted the square by itself, right? Well, right now, I'm, my job is to get the square by itself. What's the first thing I'll do to get the square by itself? Move the 1, so what does 5x squared equal? 80. Negative 80. Now, are you all right back there? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking 90 to nothing. And is that, uh, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm picking on him because we have a rapport where I can do that. Right, right is that, uh, no, no, we don't? <laughs> so, so we're more like this instead of this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Divide both sides by 5, so x squared equals 1. Negative. Is it negative 16. 80 cents is like eight dimes, right? And if you have eight dimes, how many nickels is that? 16 nickels, right? Oh, it's, it's all about the nickels and dimes, right? Nickels and dimes. Nickels and dimes. Five cents, ten cents. Well, you say it's all about the Benjamins. It's all about nickels and dimes for me because I'm a baller on a budget. You'll make it rain. No, we'll make it hail. <laughs> So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, right? Plus or minus. Thank you for the plus or minus. You're welcome. Oh. All right. So x equals plus or, minus plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of your negative gives you i. I did it. Awesome. We did it.